to this now. Great. Awesome. Thank you. I'm seeing everybody's comments coming in. Um, this is this is great. Uh, perfect. Okay. Season, but never with the kiddos. Um, camped a couple times with the kids. Okay, cool. So, so it seems here that a lot of folks have uh, mildly seasoned. Okay, perfect. So like uh, medium, medium rare. This is great. So I think the content that we've got is going to be really uh, relevant uh, for everybody here. And again, if there's questions, uh, obviously feel free to shoot them over and we will address them as best we can. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and just get started here. So what are we going to cover tonight? Uh, whoops, hold on, bear with me for a second. There we go. What are we gonna cover tonight? We're gonna cover a few things. The first thing we're gonna cover is how to choose a route and a site. Um, so we're going to cover meals, how to plan for meals, and how to eat meals out there. Uh, we're going to cover sleep, something that is, I'm sure, on everybody's mind as parents all the time, and how to facilitate good sleeps for everybody out in the backcountry. Uh, we're going to talk about gear, uh, all of the gear, planning and, and packing. We're going to talk about what to wear. Uh, we're going to talk about attitude, and we're going to talk about how to love the dirt. Uh, I think these are all very, very important things. Hopefully, this provides a good overview of everything that there is to to know or to create a, a baseline ex, uh, experience and knowledge around tripping with kids. Uh, and hopefully, we we answer all those questions in it. Really quickly, who are we, anyways? Uh, so. Alexander and I, Alexander is my brother, uh, we make up the Trip Shed. The Trip Shed is an experience focused outdoor store. So what does that mean? That means that we certainly sell gear and we sell camping equipment. We're very focused on camping, hiking, and paddling equipment. We have a, a complete online e-commerce store at the tripshed.ca, uh, but we really take it one step further and we provide those experiences as well. Uh, so some of those experiences take place in the form of these workshops, and these are, are weekly or bi-weekly uh, free workshops that we put on. Um, and the other piece of that is trips. Uh, so we do fully guided, fully outfitted trips focused on some very specific things. So we have some trips focused exclusively for beginners, where we really highlight uh, skill development and, and learning in the outdoors. We have fo some focus on families with younger kids. Uh, we have a number of different trips available for folks that want to take part in a guided experience. Uh, and that is, that is part of what we do as an experience focused outdoor store. But with that, I will hop in to the meat of it. Oh my God, these are amazing. This is a slide that's in a, few, in a few of our presentations. And I think it's very relevant. I did forget to take it out, but it's still incredibly relevant for our presentation tonight because that is always what kids say for the first time they've had a s'more, especially a s'more cooked over a fire. Uh, we can talk more about that on our food section, uh, but it still holds true. Let's hop into it. <laughs> so route planning. Uh, this is an incredibly important thing when you are, are planning your first trip with your kids. Um, thinking about your route and thinking about your spot. First thing you want to start sort of start thinking about is where are you going? Where do you want to go? Where, where you're going and where you want to go is going to depend on your experience and your own comfort level. What do I mean when I say where are you going and where do you want to go? For for the purposes of this conversation, we're going to look at backcountry versus front country camping. We're, we're not talking about crown land or anything like that tonight at all. We're going to keep it super simple, backcountry, front country, primarily in provincial parks or family campgrounds. Um, so that's the very first thing that you want to sort of establish. Uh, where are you going to go and why? Um, before you even think about what you're going to start bringing, you want to think about where you're going. Uh, because camping with kids brings a whole slew of extra considerations that may or may not come into play uh, when camping with just adults. Ray, at any point also, please do feel free to, to interrupt me if you have thoughts on anything here and, and we can we can spitball as we go on. Um, something that I, I really like to consider when, when planning trips with kids um, on the front country side is that you, you definitely, when I say front country, let me just clarify what I mean by that. I typically mean drive up camping. Um, and I'll do a quick definition for folks who don't know here. Uh, so front country would be a 
campsite in a park where you drive directly to your site and you typically park on the site itself, whereas a backcountry site is completely human powered access to that site, typically in the form of canoeing, uh, kayaking or hiking, just to clarify. Um, so what is a really important thing when we're scouting out a site, and that's any site, front country or back country, uh, but is it being close to a bathroom, for example, is something that's really important to consider. Uh, if your kids are potty trained or even a little shy to, to do their business in the woods, you want to have access to a bathroom. In backcountry sites, the, the bathroom situation, and again, this is dependent on the age of your kid as well. Uh, you have a couple options. The, the main option for a backcountry site is something called a Kaibo. We call it a Kaibo uh, or a thunder box or a treasure chest. Kaibo stands for keep your butt off, um, but it's essentially, it's a box uh, on top of a hole that you go to the bathroom on. Um, Ray, I know has some like specific experience uh, as we all do with going to the bathroom in the woods, but like, uh, Ray, what, what are your thoughts on, on making kids poop happy in the woods? Well, um, I can tell you that they were going to want to go at the most inconvenient times. Uh, <laughs> the first poop my daughter took in the, in the woods was on the side of a portage trail because, well, that's where she had to go. So yeah, you drop what you're doing and you make it work. Um, I know that when we're front country camping, we take a giant tent and it's, I've often brought a, a port, like a small potty for them just to get through the nights and to make life easier through whenever it's necessary. Um, some yeah. tricks I've picked up was an umbrella is probably one of the best additions to your kit for those poops in the rain. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you're standing there waiting for them to go, nobody wants to be wet. Yeah, yeah. For sure. That's, that's great. And, and I love what you said there about the tent as well. Um, so that's something that, that I think is really important. Something that we've planned for as a family as well now is, you know, you're a family of three, great, bring a six person tent or that's a five great. person tent, right? Um, I know for us, we have, we have a little six month old at home. Um, so now we're planning for in our tent, uh, bring the pack and play and having that in the tent with us. I think we'll talk about that a bit more uh, once we get to the, the sleep section of, of this discussion. Um, but I think that's, that's, that's really helpful and something to consider when you're choosing a, a, a route. Um, when you, something else that's really important when choosing a site um, is being very cognizant of different water features uh, and any really features that are on the site. Um, you may want to choose a site that isn't necessarily right on the water. If, if you know your kids love to run around and you're, you're cool with that, um, then you may want a site that's, that's again, not right on the water. So the kids don't right, run right into, <laughs> into the lake. Um, one thing that's a, a consideration primarily at front country or drive up campgrounds is going to be volume as well. Um, so keeping that in mind too, uh, what the volume is typically like at a park uh, and at that park's campground. And when I say volume, I obviously refer to uh, just the kids being able to fall asleep at 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night uh, without your neighbors drinking and, and, and being loud right next to you. Uh, it's really nice to have campgrounds with certain amenities. Again, this is for front country um, to make things a bit more comfortable if, if that's something that you and your family need. So whether that's ball fields or, or beaches, swimming areas, um, even playgrounds in some cases, that's, that's not so much what we're, what we're focused on uh, tonight's discussion is going to be a bit more on the backcountry side of things. Uh, however, if you do choose to do front country, which is, I think, a really, really great option uh, for first time camping uh, with kids, uh, it provides all those securities, but also a lot of those, the feelings of, of getting out there at the same time for them. Uh, then that's a good thing to think out. On, on that our, note, sorry, Ray. Our first, our first trip was, uh, was front country, but we looked at it as though we were going backcountry and we learned a ton. There's, well, that, well, that's uh, there's, it. You, there's always stuff you forget, and it's all about trying to make do with what you have. And it was definitely a learning experience for sure. And and I feel like so many of those experiences and learnings uh, can can only really be had once they've been realized, right? I think Absolutely. workshops like this are great. Um, 
And, you know, we're so happy to give them, but we're also very cognizant of the fact uh, that this can only go so far, right? Um, so, so if it is your first time out, definitely start small. Um, stick close to home. Again, if that's something that you choose to do, um, more developed campgrounds with different amenities are, are really great. And then you can work your way up to sort of more remote or adventurous locations or, or longer trips. I know Ray, you've done some like significantly longer tripping with your kids as well. Yeah. Uh, my daughter, my daughter was in uh, Killarney when she was two and a half uh, for four or five days. And then the following year we did seven or eight days in Algonquin. So she's done a, she's done a fair bit of tripping for a six-year-old that uh, my son has not done as much, but he's only three. So, I mean, we've been living through COVID. Right. Right. Of course. Um, and, and Ray, what is, what, what's the process like when you're planning for a trip with the kids? Like, are they, are they involved in that process or? Absolutely. So, I mean, normally we know where we're already going so i'll get the maps out and put them on the floor and have the kids lay on the maps and we point where we're going and we point out to the the highlights of you know what they might see and you know where they might be able to go swimming and yeah we talk about all the things you might be able to see like moose i mean you can't guarantee that but you can point out where you might be able to see them and mm -hmm. um and then as far as like the packing side of it goes they're involved right from the get-go uh, they help it pack their own stuff. They help pack the, the tents. They help pack the packs. They, I try to keep them involved as much as they possibly can. Awesome. Awesome. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a little bit as well. Um, the last few notes I have on, on picking a site uh, is going to be on safety. Um, and that's, that's, you know, we can tripping a large part of our tripping is the ability to manage risks and, and, choose risks uh, that you believe you are uh, have the capacity to manage and are thus lowering the risk. Um, but when you get to a site, uh, first of all, identifying any physical potential dangers, uh, for example, like a, a dead tree that's leaning over the perfect spot for a tent is probably not the spot to put a tent or, or to camp at all. Um, but in this case, uh, it's really setting those ground rules for where the kiddos can and cannot roam. Um, what the what the boundaries are of itself, right? Like in a front country site, boundaries are a parking lot or a road. Uh, in a back country site, perhaps the boundary is a, is the Kaibo itself, and we don't we don't want to pass the Kaibo. I don't want to pass the Kaibo because of ghosts and bears now as it is. But like definitely setting those boundaries with the kids, uh, I think is is incredibly important. Uh, and as you set those boundaries, uh, Ray, you had something really great that you had told me before and something that your daughter always wears around her neck on her yeah, trips. I gave her a, a whistle before she went on her first trip and I put it on a lanyard. So she gets one on her PFD, which, you know, is just common sense, but she gets another one that she carries around her neck all the time. Um, it's easy. It's easy to get uh, turned around. And at least that way, she's got some way to get a, get a hold of somebody when when necessary. So, and, and I think really important along with that as well is teaching them uh, when and when not to blow it. Uh, I, I've had a few experiences when I'm on a lake and I hear whistles blowing across the lake and I paddle uh, and it's just like somebody testing out their whistle. <laughs> and, and I'd also recommend test it out at home in a park close by because mm -hmm. uh, believe it or not, they're, the little ones have more trouble blowing than you think they're going to. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Ray. Uh, okay, let's let's move over. I'm just gonna quickly check the chat. We're good. Cool. Um, so meal prep, meal prep is gonna be a fairly short thing that we talk about tonight. There's a, a totally separate workshop that we ran on meal prep. Um, feel free to look at our YouTube channel. Uh, it's recorded. It's up there right now. Um, but we will touch on a few things quickly for for meals. Uh, the first thing I want to mention on meals for kids specifically is snacks. Uh, snacks are are really important for adults, but definitely really important for for kids as well. I see Ray like nodding All and shaking. Snacks. All yeah. of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like so so important, and 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 snacks that work, right? Like do whatever works for you. I mean, I, I think it's so important to identify at the beginning, what, what's the goal of getting your kids out there camping with you in the first place, right? Is it to have your kids love camping or is it to like, just bring them along on your trip, 
Uh, I think that's that's an important framework and, and way to think about this. Uh, if the goal is to get them to love being outdoors and to love camping and to love snacks, our way of life, and, and, and to love tripping with you as a family, uh, then that's that's great. Um, do what works. Uh, there, there's no need to make yourself crazy. If, if, if your typical tripping meal is is chicken stir fry, for example, but your kids hate chicken stir fry, you're not having chicken stir fry on your trips, <laughs> right? Like, Ray, what are what are some typical things that you might cook on a trip, uh, or like how you how you think about that process? Well, I try I try a lot of stuff at home before we go on trips. Um, I figure if they'll eat it at home, they'll eat it when they're out when they're out on a trail. But uh, what I will tell you is, I don't like craft dinner and hot dogs. And I can tell you every single trip I go on has craft dinner hot dogs because the kids <laughs> eat it every time and there's no arguments and it's easy, but I mean, you just have to adapt. It's not, it's not, it's not about you anymore. It's about them and mm -hmm. they need to stay, they need to stay uh, well-fed if you want happy kids. So I definitely awesome. recommend trying, I definitely recommend trying stuff at home. And as far as snacks, uh, just take a whole lot of everything because they'll get tired of one and switch the gold goldfish out to the to the cake flavored ones and you <laughs> day saver right there one thing that we don't have here but i was just thinking about now um how do you how do you approach um snack mess around a campsite like i when you said goldfish i'm just picturing myself eat, eating goldfish and i'm a mess when i eat in the first place uh, and I, I would imagine i would make crumbs and, and leave a mess uh, when i'm in camp i try to keep them eating in one place um, when, when they're really little, I had a folding high chair for them. Not, it wasn't a high chair. It was just a, a folding little seat that you could buckle them into. Uh, oh. so it did keep the mess to one centralized location when they get a little bigger. Uh, it's not as big an issue, but, um, yeah, we, we tried to strap them down the best we could when they were eating. Yeah. Fair. Awesome. Um, one piece that you had mentioned there is definitely allowing the kids to contribute. So are, are you, are you letting them cook with you or letting them prep or, or plan the meals? I guess it depends on, on what they can even do. Like I'm not giving a knife to my 10 month old, but <laughs> where, where are you at there? It totally depends on the kid. Um, you know, may, maybe that's dumping the noodles into the boiling water and that's, that's their contribution to dinner. Other times, you know, they, they can mix stuff. They can watch a stove while well, my daughter can watch a stove now, but you just have to, you have to work around the kid, what they're capable of. And that expectation is going to be different for every child. Awesome. Uh, the last thing I have here is on ready to go meals. That's very much in line with snacks as well. Um, but again, things are, things are easy. Do you ever use dehydrated meals with with your kids or? or all, the time. Or all the time. My kids love dehydrated meals. Uh, we, we do a lot of it in the winter uh, when I'm bored and I have nothing else going on. So they'll help me right. prep it before it goes into the dehydrator and then they'll help me vacuum seal it as well. So they're included in that, in that side of prep as well. Perfect. And, and, and for the folks on the call, like don't, don't let dehydrating your own meals be something that's intimidating. First of all, it doesn't need to be, it's very easy to do super with, simple with or without a dehydrator. Um, you can do it in the oven, low temp, uh, with the door open. Uh, you can also buy dehydrated meals, uh, which are super easy. Um, there's a few really great brands out there uh, as well. Um, or you can definitely bring fresh, like like we, we bring fresh fruit and salads on some of our trips. Um, like you, you can really do whatever you want uh, when it comes to meals, I guess, as long as they're, they're all enjoying it, right? Cool. Ray, any last, uh, last thoughts on this? Snacks, lots and lots and lots <laughs> of snacks. I don't know if you, you can't take too many snacks. Oh, love it. Okay. Sweet. For the kids and for, for the parents. Absolutely. Perfect. Uh, okay. Sleep, 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 sleep. Okay. So by, by far the biggest concern and, and my also, by the way, so, so set the context. I have a six month old right now. Um, that I'm taking out tripping this summer. My biggest anxiety around it is is sleep, without a doubt. Right? Um, I know when I talk to other families, um, is is how to get these kids to sleep in an unfamiliar territory. Uh, what if they don't fall asleep? What if they get cold? What if what if they wake up? 
what if they wake up somebody else? What if they're crying on the lake and somebody else across the lake wakes up? I think there's a whole bunch of things that can potentially be anxiety inducing. Um, but I think there's also plenty of ways to get ahead of that beforehand. Um, I think I think it's all very age dependent. Um, but Ray would love to like hear about some of your thoughts and experiences and how you approach good, safe and happy sleep on a trip. Uh, well, I'll tell you the first, the first couple of trips were tough. There wasn't a lot of sleep had by most people, <laughs> but, but you're, you know, you'll, you learn as you go. Um, but what I will tell you is we always try to keep the kids dressed for like the next season. So in the summer, we try to dress them as though it's the fall. I don't want cold kids. Um, mm -hmm. We made sure we had warm, good sleeping bags for them, but they wore their warmest pajamas and they had socks and I had a tube before them. You know, anything we could do to make sure that they're warm. Um, they're sleeping bags they got for Christmas. So for them, it was like really exciting to be able to go use them. Um, <sighs> funny story. Uh, we were, I was on a trip with my daughter and I was, she was making do with an old sleeping mat that really we shouldn't have been using. It wasn't very good. So I put her to bed and she went to sleep and I was out with a big group. So I went out to the rest of the group for a while. When I came back into the tent, she's sleeping on my air mat. So as it turns out, I ended up having to buy her a new air mat so I could have mine back. So my moral to this story is make sure your kids have good stuff. And I'm not saying it has to be the most expensive or, or anything, but make sure they have good quality stuff because it's going to be the difference between being comfortable and not comfortable. Totally, totally. And, and, and to that end, I mean, as you know, as a, as a gear store, uh, you know, we're, we're more than happy to like sell kids sleeping bags and stuff, but it, it gets expensive. So we're really big fans of, of, of borrow, buy, used, uh, go to outfitters, talk to friends as much as you can. Uh, there's a few like, you know, um, clever things out there, um, like sizable sleeping bags that will grow with them as, as they grow. Uh, but, but yeah, definitely talk to friends and family, um, or outfitters or us and, and see like what, what can be lent out. Um, because that, especially those that first trip, uh, those first couple of trips, I'm sure are so important to be, to be comfy. So yeah, absolutely. No, uh, there's a note, there's somebody said here about bringing a stuffy in a blanket. So I let my kids pack their, their stuffy, their blanket. They usually get to bring one or two books and I let them bring a couple of toys as well. So it just kind of, we can run their normal bedtime routine and hopefully they'll go to sleep. Well, usually they do because they're pretty tired, but yeah. So, so, I mean, they're pretty tired because you're, you're traveling, you're paddling, you're hiking all day. They're, they're exhausted as it is. Exactly. Yeah. And then, and then you're just carrying that like slam, that same sort of sleep routine right there and, and our bedtime routine and, and, and things are hopefully good. Hopefully good. I mean, there's always <laughs> one night that it doesn't, it doesn't work out. And the one night an owl decides to start hooting at two in the morning, guess what? You might be up from that point forward. I'm not going to say they're all wins, but there's more yeah. wins than losses. So good. And then hopefully the, the wins keep growing and the losses. Exactly. Minimize. Exactly. Um, but I, I see a bunch of questions actually here. Um, Peapod tents for younger kids. Are you familiar with them or have any thoughts on Peapod tents? I don't even know what they are. No, neither do I. Is it like a, like a pop-up little tent? Uh, Dan, you can let us know in the chat. Um, yeah, feel free to, feel free to address these in the chat. As... Well, when we were front country camping, we, we would often bring a pack and play as well for, uh, for them when they were really, really little. Um, Cause that was as much, as much like sleeping at home as we could make it. But as I said, we took a giant tent. I mean, the thing weighed like 20 pounds. It was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. But we, we've, we've got a six person tent uh, for the season with a pack and play. Um, we, the option that we chose for the season, which might be interesting to some people, uh, if, you, if you don't want to do front country necessarily, um, where you have a drive up camping, but still want a bit of a back country experience, there are some really great sites in Algonquin um, at, the, at the south southern portion of the park on King Scott Lake. Uh, King Scott has walk-in sites uh, where you park your car and you walk. I think it's like 300 meters to your site. Um, so it's a bit more secluded. Your car is not far away. Uh, across the road is a developed campground that you can't hear. It's very, it's it's a 10 minute drive away, uh, but you still have really that, that bit more of a secluded backcountry feeling. Uh, and we are certainly like bringing the pack and play and everything else um, that can possibly <laughs> come along with it uh, to be comfortable that, for that first time. So that's a, an interesting uh, compromise if you're looking for that too. The, in that the on that note the Halliburton Highlands also has a couple of of uh, campsites in the Poker Lakes area that are only 
you know, three, 400 meters from the put in. So if you did want to paddle in, they're not that far either. Yeah. And, and I'll add one more there as well. Um, the Limberlost Forest and Wildlife Reserve in, in Huntsville uh, has, from what I've seen, uh, drive-in backcountry sites, which seems very interesting. It's, it's, a, it's a large uh, wilderness area, but it's been developed with, with roads and at road access to uh, sites, many of which are the sole site on a lake. Uh, if any folks have an experience uh, with Limberlost, uh, let us know. But from what I've read and the guys that I've spoken to, one of the guys that I know that works there, uh, it seems it seems really interesting. Um, white noise machines. What are your What are your thoughts on that, if at all, Ray? Uh, we we use white noise at home. Whatever, um, whatever you got to do. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> if that, okay, cool. <laughs> if that's what you got to do, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. I mean, at the end of the day, you want to reduce the weight as much as possible. But if that little machine is what's going to what's going to change everyone from getting good, a good night's sleep and not it's well worth it. Sweet. Perfect. We're, we're not talking too much today on, on camping with a baby. Um, we, we do have a whole section on camping with a baby and we're, we're working on some resources in a blog post that will talk about that. Uh, but I think that's a, a bit of a separate discussion altogether, potentially, um, which we can unpack a little bit here if there are specific questions uh, for you, Ray, but but I think that's something separate for now. Fair enough. Uh, sweet. Okay. Uh, this note, yes, as <laughs> I'm not giving up with these slides here, but definitely be flexible uh, as if possible um, with bedtime routines and, and, you know, understanding that you're probably not going to be able to bring your blackout curtains with you uh, on a trip as much as you'd like to prevent light from getting into the tent. Uh, it, it may still be light. So I think a certain level of, of flexibility, which goes uh, for all parts of tripping, I think, which is really important in tripping with kids and, and tripping in general, uh, which you can talk about more, uh, is I think an important part, piece of this as well. Uh, any last pieces you want to talk about sleep before we move on? No, you cool. got her all. We got this. Everyone's going to have good sleep this summer. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, gear. So gear, I think we, we've been talking about gear this whole way through. Um, the gear you bring is, is totally up to you and what you want and what you need to be comfortable. I mean, I think my, my own gear kit has certainly evolved as, as I've gotten older. And as you know, when, when I tripped 10 years ago, I, I brought next to nothing. And now I refuse to trip without, without chairs right? It's, it is, an, it is, it is not a luxury. It's a, it's a necessity, right? Um, so the gear that you bring is, is totally up to you. Um, I think there's, there's a certain mindset in certain tripping groups that like, you need to travel light, you need to travel fast and you, you can, you can only single carry the portage there. There really is no rush, right? The whole point of this. When you're, tra when you're traveling with kids, you really have to, you, you got to keep that in mind. There's no rush. You got to slow down. You got to have a good time. That's it, right? So, so bring, bring whatever, bring, bring. I, I'm, I'm bringing the the 25 pound pack and play, right? Like, <clears throat> bring whatever it is that you need to bring. Um, really, I think important to make lists, though, because you know, forgetting stuff is bad. Uh, forgetting stuff with kids is even worse. Last year, two years ago, I, I bought a new tent from somebody on on Facebook and. It, it was it was still in the package. It had like the sale tag on it and everything. So I was like, perfect, this is good to go. I just like threw it in my kit, threw it in my bag and I went out. Luckily it wasn't on a guided trip or anything. It was on a trip that I took out with my cousin at early June. We get to our site and I go. And if you're familiar with June in Algonquin, uh, it's bug season. Bugs are, are, are out and it's it's absolutely brutal. So we get there, we get out. Uh, he starts building a fire and I go set up the tent. I pull out the tent and there's no tent. It's just the tarp, just the rain fly. Um, and we decided to stay. We were pretty deep in there and it was, it was getting late. So we stayed, we stayed for another four days. But uh, if I had checked it, if I had made a list and I had double checked everything, uh, that wouldn't have happened. If I was with kids, that wouldn't even be an option. We would go home, <laughs> definitely. Um, but like, since that experience, and sometimes it takes an experience like that to, to really ingrain it in your mind, um, 
I, I triple check every single list and every piece of gear as well, right? Just because something was there last year does not mean it's there this year at all. It's probably not uh, there or, or working. So I think super, super important to always make lists uh, and check them twice. Uh, one of the things that we do is, is we make a list and as I pull out stuff uh, before it actually gets packed, um, my wife will go over it as well. So there's two sets of eyes checking each piece before it goes into a pack, before the pack goes in the van. That way we are covered because as you said, when you're at, when you're without something with kids, it, it could be the make or break to the trip right there. For sure. For sure. And I, I think, I mean, that does speak to a certain level of flexibility and adaptability as well and, and, and being able to make do, but yes, there are certain things um, like if you don't have a water filter, you're going home, right. Or, I mean, you can boil water if, if you're comfortable with that and happy to do that. But like, there's certain things that, that you'll, you'll certainly need. Um, staying as organized as you possibly can is incredibly important for me, at least. Uh, I like, so if you're car camping, drive up camping, for example, get a bunch of clear plastic totes, have everything in there labeled, organized, you know, where everything is. You could literally just throw it in your car and bring it with you as well, uh, which is super or bring easy. a bigger tent and you can fit them right in your tent. <laughs> Even easier, right? Um, <laughs> Giving, I, I think this is an, a great piece to what you had mentioned before as well, Ray, is like giving the kids uh, a responsibility and, and a role with that as well. So, um, I mean, check it for them, but but it's your role, to, it's your responsibility to pack your your backpack or, or something, right? Yeah, so we like we will grab dry bags and I'll go into the, each of the kids' rooms and they'll help me pack their sleeping bag and their and their mat. And then, you know, we pick out a couple of toys, we pick out a couple of books, we pick out all that stuff. But ultimately, they're, they're the ones that put it in that bag. So they feel like they were where they contributed to, to going on the trip. Awesome. Last piece here, check your list again. That's it. Uh, just being mindful of time, we'll, we'll keep chugging along here. Okay, what to wear. Um, this goes without saying, uh, obviously very seasonal. Um, Ray, you said something earlier about dressing for the next season. Do you wanna yeah, I tr- talk about that? I try second? to always keep the kids dressed a little bit on the warm side. I mean. And middle of July, maybe you don't need to do that, but uh, August can get cold. And if the kids are wet, you got to keep that. You got to be mindful of that. So at night, I try to make sure they're they're dressed for the next season. So if we're moving into fall, I want to make sure that they're dressed for a fall night because potentially that that could happen. Right, right. I think it's really important to obviously always check the weather forecast, but also understand that like some areas, weather forecasts don't really matter or care about you, right? If you're in the highlands, uh, it can change really quickly and it you could be unprepared, especially if you're out there for a bit of a longer trip. Um, something that, that I'm always really okay with is I'm okay to leave, right? I'm okay to leave. I'm okay to cancel a trip. Um, I think you know, we, 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 we plan these experiences and we work so hard and we, we work ourselves up to go on this incredible experience. Uh, but we, we, we want, we plan these experiences for a reason, especially with kids. Um, so, you know, I know with, with my, with, even with my wife and I, like if we have a trip planned and it's, it's calling for rain for the next two days, we're not going to go like what I have no interest in, in sitting in the rain for two days. Right. At this point, pulling the plug is not necessarily being a quitter. It's just reading the, the situation. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And, and, and being okay with that and, and having a better time at the end of the day. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, rain jackets and, and boots. Super important. Make sure the rain jackets work as well. Uh, <laughs> I like the one piece ones, the nude suits from mech for, yeah. uh, for the littlest ones, because they're, they're going to be rolling in the dirt and they're going to be laying in the puddles. And I find they, they do, they do the best job keeping them dry. Uh, on that same note, uh, sunscreen, and, and bug spray if, if age appropriate or bug nets uh, is super important as well uh, for sunscreen. Um, you know, our pediatrician, excuse me, our pediatrician tells us to use the, the cheap stuff uh, right away and, and use whatever works. Um, I obviously bought like the organic sun bum though instead because why not? <laughs> Uh, but, but I think really use whatever works, uh, is, is super important. So yeah, hats, sunscreen, uh, and, and bug nets or bug spray. If, if they're, we have, we had good su- success with those, uh, those, the sun shirts that keep yes. you wear in the summer. Yeah. 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 Good success with those. Awesome. Yeah. And, and they, if, if the kid's young enough, they've got the, the full piece as well. 
um, exactly that, that are attached to the shorts uh yeah we just got a, a couple of those too uh, and layers we just always layers are are great i think that goes without saying for kids and for us as well uh, layers are always always a win uh, sweet. Do you recommend a bug shirt as plain clothes and bug spray have been fine? Uh, bug shirts are really nice. Uh, and I think those are, are essential. Um, plain clothes. My kids live, my kids live in them up here. Uh, we get bugs in June and they, that's it. They just, they got to wear them all the time whenever they're outside playing. So it's just kind of a way of life for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Plain clothes and, and bug spray, bug spray won't last. Uh, and and plain clothes will get bitten through, yeah, or or the bugs will get underneath. The the bug shirts are nice because they've got the cuffs uh, on the wrist and on the waist, so bugs have a harder time at least getting getting up there. Um, yeah. So the next section we'll quickly talk about is on attitude. Uh, so I think I mean this this kind of goes without saying for tripping in general. Uh, but to have a good trip, you typically need to have a, a good attitude and to stay positive. I think that that means that matters even more when we're tripping with kids uh, who are picking up on all of our cues and everything that we're projecting. Um, but we all we all know our kids best uh, and how they may respond to certain situations. So I think it's really important to be able to troubleshoot certain problems well ahead of time as well. Uh, get, ahead of, get ahead of them as, as early as you can and start thinking about these things right now. So, you know, is your, is your kid still potty trained or hates going, getting up at night to go to the bathroom? Um, bringing a little travel toilet uh, with you, right? Like, like doing these little things. Uh, is your kid going to wake up early? Um, can, you, can you do certain things to make the the tent and and the nighttime experience more comfortable can you bring can you bring lights right like we like little string uh, string lights to hang and uh, just like make everything more more comfortable more cozy more more happy more anything that you like uh and and getting ahead of them ahead of times is is super important i i have a um that goes for your kids but it also goes for you right um and that could mean earplugs for yourself as well um, Ray, I, I don't know if you've ever had to use earplugs on on trips for other kids so that they stay sleeping, uh, or for yourself. <laughs> I have not. I snore like a chainsaw, so uh, I can sleep through anything. <laughs> That's the white noise machine. <laughs> but my daughter does sometimes sleep better with uh, with an iPod and listening to music. That seems to to calm her well when she's having a tough a tough go getting to sleep. Yeah, whatever works, right? Exactly. Um, I think it's I think it's really important to be enthusiastic, and that's that's enthusiastic about everything. That's enthusiastic about the amazing day you're going to have, and it's really enthusiastic about this incredible rain that we have right now. And it's going to pass in a second, but like, how amazing is this rain? I think enthusiasm is always contagious, uh, but it's I think really important to keep uh, that enthusiasm high throughout the trip and and keep everyone in in good spirits there. Uh, one thing that I will say is that it's really important to find teaching moments in everything on a trip. Um, that's that's not just in you know uh, learning about the bugs and the rocks and the birds and the clouds and the stars and and all these things around us, but like how how can you teach your kids about um, land stewardship and and the importance of of taking care of of the land and sustainability and uh parks and and all these different things that that we know is is important um how can how can we ingrain those as lived experiences as opposed to uh spoken experiences and i think that's really important now more than ever when when so many things are being taught online at schools um to be able to have kids really really live those and, and see those things firsthand, again, depending on the age of your kids uh, and, and, and have those, those conversations and discussions. I think everything can be a teachable moment um, as a guide. I think that's our, our job to ensure that always takes place. Uh, but everyone on this call, all the parents here, you are now guides as well, right? You, you are guides for your kids. You are the authority. You are the expert on your trip. Uh, and and you can teach everything, right? You, you're able to instill leave no trace principles from a very very early age. For example, uh, I think there's a lot of things that a lot of opportunities that you've got here on trips uh, that that are really exciting when taking your kids out. 
Right. Anything to add? Any thoughts there? Anything to add? No, you hit the nail on the head on that one. <laughs> cool. Um, but it's also really uh, awesome to be able to know about bugs, rocks, birds, clouds, and stars as well. Uh, so if you want to do some reading ahead of time, there's some really, really great guidebooks there and resources online too, uh, where you can talk about a bug that you see and, and and why it is that way or talk about this tree and yes this is a cedar or, and and how do we know that um it's just it, nice little things to add like that are are always fun as well uh, the last section that i've got here is on how to love the dirt and the dirt comes in two forms uh, there is physical dirt and there is mental dirt uh, physical dirt is just mud uh, and it's the stuff that ray will hose off of his kids nude suits at the end of the day uh, and that that is that is fine kids will get dirty we get dirty when we're tripping uh, and that's that's fine there'll be mud on their shoes there'll be s'more goop in in their hair and there'll be dust everywhere um but that's that's fine right this is obviously like if, if there is any place to get messy and dirty, uh, this is certainly the place to do it. There, there are some ways to avoid it. Like if you you don't want dirt in the tent, for example, uh, Ray, I know you bring like three pairs of shoes uh, for your kids yeah. on trips. I, I, I bring my kids three pairs of shoes. They get a pair, of, like a wet, a wet pair for the day that they can get as muddy as they want. They get a dry pair for in camp. And then I always bring them rain boots too because they are invaluable for, for children. Yeah. Right. So, so that's, I mean, there we can, we can manage the dirt. Um, but I think it's also really important to, to embrace it. Right. And to know that no matter how prepared you are, things, things aren't going to go your way. Right. Just, just plan for it at the beginning that whatever plans you have are not going to work out and, and something's going to go wrong. And I do, I do, quotations here because it's not wrong it's just it is what it is and, and i think there's a certain level of flexibility and adaptability that's required there now i also recognize that it's very easy to say that uh, from a place of, of, of a bit more experience and and i think that's the main way that people can can generate that the ability to be adaptable uh, and the ability to improvise but but that's it like this is this is all a journey and it's a first trip or a second trip or a third trip. There's tons and tons of room to grow and everything is, is a lesson for the next one uh, and a lesson for, for the kids for this one. Um, but I think trying to embrace it as much as you can to not dwell on like the, the difficult things, like we just spilled uh, our entire container of dehydrated food all over the floor. Uh, that's fine. We've, we've got a million snacks. So it's no That's big right. deal. And every, <laughs> exactly. We packed all the snacks. Uh, so there's, there's never any issues. Uh, obviously there are some issues. And, and if there's like a, we didn't talk a lot about uh, like any medical emergencies out here. I, I, by no means are we qualified to give out medical advice, nor would I want to do that. So make sure that you are, are, are able to deal with what you might need to out there. I strongly suggest everyone taking a first aid course, uh, ideally wilderness first aid, however, some level of first aid while you're out there and definitely having a first aid kit that you know how to use as well. Uh, but apart from any medical emergencies or issues that are out there, uh, most things can be solved with snacks. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, any, any thoughts from you, Ray, or, or anybody else that's, that's on the call? Yeah, no, just, just want to reiterate that flexibility is, is, is important, um, but also knowing when to pull the plug and say, you know what, too many things are not going right. We need to go home. It's just better for everybody because at the end of the day, you want to be able to take them out on another trip and you want them to enjoy it. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, I have a couple slides in here for baby camping, uh, but we're not going to talk about it because we've got... <laughs> got 10 minutes left uh, i think this is a whole other session on its own uh which may or or may not happen one day uh but will certainly be included in in some sort of a resource shortly so if you like that let us know we can share it with you guys or check out our blog and, and we can have things up there as well um but if we're going to touch on a couple of really really quick things um staying close to home looking for amenities are really important and stick with drive up first i think those are all things that we've already discussed um 
shade, large tent, easy meals, play yards. Talked about all these things already. <laughs> um, but yeah, won't, won't dive too deep into it. Uh, and last tips, any other last tips? I know we've talked about uh, a whole bunch of different things tonight, um, but any last tips around all of these things here? So, so toys, super important. Um, bugs, also really important in bug protection. Breastfeeding, Ray, uh, I know you're like so staunch about, about comfort. So yeah, tell, tell me about it. <laughs> okay, so uh, the, when my wife was still breastfeeding, we not, I mean, we had this giant, uh, giant tent, but I made sure that she had a chair inside there because uh, rumor has it women like to be comfortable when they're breastfeeding. <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm not a woman, but uh, studies suggest that's a good thing. So anything to keep the mom happy makes the dad happy too. So well, we brought an extra chair and anything, whatever it takes. Well, that's it. I think, I think, I think chairs are, are really important for everyone to be comfortable. Uh, but again, I mean, you want everyone to be as comfortable as you can and you bring whatever you yes. need to, to make sure that that's, that's there. Um, putting in special touches, I think is a huge piece. I mean, like I said, even those little string lights uh, are, are super nice and, and just create like a bit of a, of a homey feel in the tent. Uh, umbrellas, umbrellas are, are great just to have, but they're really great when you're, when you're pooping in the woods as well. Uh, <laughs> always a nice touch. Yeah, I couldn't believe I could, the, the umbrella was the one thing that was like, I can't believe that I can't believe I went so long without taking one and it, it takes up so little space and is so valuable when when you need it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shoes, more shoes is is whoops is great. Uh, tablets. Okay, so so this <laughs> is, uh, I'm sure something that's debated amongst some circles. Uh, but Beret, talk to talk to us about tablets. All right, so uh, I'm going to be honest. I take my tablet for my kids when we go camping. Please don't tell anybody. Sean um, Peterson is on the call. He's going to tell everyone. I know. He can't keep <laughs> his mouth closed. Um, <laughs> but the fact is, sometimes the kids need a break. Sometimes you need a break. And, you know, a, a 25-minute TV show that you've downloaded for them uh, so they can watch in the tent while you're doing something else. Or, God forbid, you're on a point in Killarney in the middle of a torrential thunderstorm for three hours. You need something to to keep the kids interested because it's it's pretty hard to keep them interested underneath the tarp so yeah. i think they have their place is it ideal no but it's all about keeping them wanting to come back for more and i think that it, it can help awesome and the last thing there is a big tent we should have added snacks as the last line here i agree uh, i don't know why snacks isn't on there i know i know idiot <laughs> um, <laughs> But, but yeah, I think all of these and, and more, I think there's so many moving parts here. Um, if, if, I, if I were to leave everybody with, with sort of three key takeaways here that I think are really important to think about when planning and going on trips with your kids, uh, the first being know your skill set uh, and know what sort of capacity you have or are interested in, uh, in, in planning. So, so appreciating that this year uh, there's not a ton of, av of availability uh, in camping, for example, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a great idea to book a you know six day backcountry trip in Tomogamy. I think being realistic about what is what is capable and and managing risk right from the get go is is super important. Uh, second key takeaway I think is going to be to be able to adapt and improvise. Again, that comes with uh, some level of experience, but doing as much. Uh, research, reading, attending things like this, asking questions, uh, talking to anybody you like. We're always available as well, by the way. If you want to message us on Facebook, Instagram, send us an email, call us, whatever you like. Uh, we're always around to answer questions. There's amazing resources online. Uh, I'll, I'll plug Sean's group since, <laughs> since he's here as well. Uh, there's a great Facebook group called Ontario Backcountry Camping. Uh, awesome resource with a ton of really, really great, friendly, uh, knowledgeable people uh, that if you have any questions at all, 
you can get a hive mind to answer your questions there. Um, so having those skills to be able to adapt and improvise. And the third key takeaway apart from snacks, uh, but is to stay positive uh, within the situation and whatever is dealt. And I think the, the situation itself and the experience will be as, as positive and exciting and, and, and cause the kiddos to want to go out again and again and again, if that's something that they want to do uh, is, is really important, I think. So with that, uh, I think that that wraps up just about everything. I, happy. Uh, I just to... had one other thought. Oh yeah, yeah, don't, please. Don't take crayons. Take pencil crayons. <laughs> Regular crayons melt. It makes a mess. Nobody needs that. Uh, just, just, just a suggestion. Pro tips. No, that's that's very important. <laughs> do you do you do you bring them dull and sharpen on site, or do you bring them pre-sharpened? No, no, that's crazy. You pre-sharpen them. <laughs> You're um, just making things harder. Well, I think that's all really useful. Um, we can visit the the chat for any other questions, but again, um, we, we don't leave here. This will be recorded and posted as well on our YouTube channel. We'll share the link once it's ready with everybody here. Um, but again, we're, we're always available. Our email is at the bottom. There's so many amazing resources to be doing this. Uh, Ontario is the tripping capital of the world. And if you're interested in camping, there's no better place to do it than, than right here. Uh, and there's some amazing, really, really uh, knowledgeable, really experienced, and really great people out there to, to help you make the best of your experience. Um, so again, uh, we, we thank you. Uh, so much for coming out. If there's anything that you need, uh, any experiences that you're looking for, any gear questions that you have as well, please feel free to let us know at any time. Uh, and we're, we're more than happy to help. I will quickly look at the chat. Ray, are there any other questions that we missed in the chat? I want to make sure that we answer everybody's sort of specific things if there, if there were any. Um, I Few people were asking about tents. What's your recommendation? I mean, we're, we're now we've moved on to a smaller tent, so we're using an L cap four. Um, do you have another suggestion from your uh, the store side of things? I I love the Eureka line of tents. Um, the El Capitan is is one of my favorites. Um, we we use uh, the Timberline Outfitter um, because it's got a higher ceiling typically. Um, so, so the Timberline uh, is a type of tent that's like an A-frame tent, as opposed to an El Capitan, which is typically a little bit lower. Um, so I, I like that uh, with a pack and play is nice because you can stand above it uh, if it's big enough. Uh, but to be honest, the best tent is the one that you have um, at the end of the day. Uh, and if it's dry and waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> the best end is the one you have uh, and, and whatever you've got will, will be more than fine at the end of the day and, and you'll enjoy it no matter what. Cool. Well, with that, maybe we'll wrap things up with two minutes to go unless you have any, any parting words of wisdom, Ray. I know Laura wants a blog post with horror stories, so <laughs> you, you're going to have to deliver on that. I will uh, see, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just, I, I just encourage everybody to get out there and yeah, it's going to be tough, but uh, it's support. It's totally worth it. When, when I ask my daughter what she wants to do in the summer, the same thing keeps coming up. She wants to go on canoe trips. That's all she wants to do. So, I mean, as, as a parent, I feel like that's a win. Awesome. Awesome. Love to see it. Uh, one last question that came in. Any tips for entertaining kids on long paddle days? Yes. Um, my daughter has a small a uh, rubber ducky that I ended up having to tie a string onto and I tied it to her PFD. So she spent a good chunk of the day tossing it over the side, waiting until oh, the man. string got tight and then pulling it back in. Sounds boring, but I mean, she made it just have a good time with it. So <laughs> oh, I liked it a lot. I might do that on my own life jacket. Also snacks. Don't, don't forget yeah. snacks. <laughs> awesome. Well, well, we'll leave it with that closing tip on snacks uh and and again thank you everybody so much for for choosing to spend an hour with us tonight we really really do appreciate and we're we're grateful that you guys could join us uh we hope to see you out there we really do thanks so much everyone and have a great night
Bye.